The dreams. Hello there, everybody. How are we all doing tonight? Welcome to another episode of Behind the Screens. I am joined by my good friend and DM, Bella Monster. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah. Nice and warm today, so... Always good, Love always you. good. And uh, today, we are going to be building a city. I'm very excited about this one. Um, because we have some notes. Let's so pull up my uh, my thing here. We have some notes about uh, our different creatures and some such peoples, and uh, we're going to be going to be making a city uh, based around the concept of the elf uh, elf cities with the portals in the middle of them, and I think that's going to be. I think it's going to be pretty cool, honestly. But, uh... All right. Yeah. So, the thing that um, the viewers watching will probably need just a summary mm -hmm. of um, what is meant by an elven city or, like, the, el the culture of the elves in general. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so... Um, we did our previous episode of Behind the Screens was based off of uh, ancestry stereotypes um, and how we can uh, take some of the cool aspects of the different 
ancestries and then shirk off a lot of the ones that don't allow for sort of stories to be told um, or are things that have been told to death uh, as the case may be um, so with that being said um, instead of your uh, natural uh, you know natural affinity for magic tree loving uh, bow slinging elves bow slinging elves um, with long hair for some reason and no facial hair um, they are going to be turned into metropolitan urbanites uh, or you know city seekers uh, the builders of civilization um, generally stationary expansionist um, so they turtle like uh, dwarves do but they don't generally like build cities elsewhere from where they are uh, which we'll get into and then um, they have um, magic that manipulates the natural world and s such around them um, to help them like landscape and a whole bunch of other stuff so yeah hey Amy how's it going I'm not sure if this music is too loud. It might be. I'm just yeah, I think it might be a little bit loud. I think my voice can carry over, but it can get loud. Let's drop it 20%. How's that? Is that doing alright? Also, hey, Amy. How's it going? Good to hello, see you. Hello. Um, yeah. So... We're going to be building the city, and we have some rules here to build uh, settlements with uh, from the Game Mastery Guide. But I figure, rather than using the Archives of Nethys uh, to do that, the drop is perfect. Much more ambient. Cool. Yeah. Lovely. Um, so rather than using Archives of Nethys for uh, the stream view, I can use the actual book itself um in the book is the game mastery guide and it has a whole bunch of different sections on like building settlements and a whole bunch of other stuff um so what page is he on currently i am currently for anyone who wants to read along i'm currently on page 126 the building what? settlements thing 126, okay. <laughs> we'll put the right number down. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Alright, let's go for it. Um, All right. I don't know if we could probably do a layout, because I'm not a great person to draw on a screen. But yep. at least we'll get a lot of the other aspects out of the way. Absolutely. Um, so, with that being said, um, we are planning on building one of the uh, one of the districts uh, in the Elven City uh, to kind of kick us off. Um, now, I think for me, um, and this is something that uh, Bella Monster and I have talked about uh, off stream, um, the Elven City, because they have access to that portal technology, it makes sense that the Elven City is actually this big this one big city but utilizes the portals to effectively be the doorways to the other districts of that city um <clears throat> and so each district has a certain amount of self-sufficiency but um each one is actually kind of its own separate quote-unquote city um and that way you can have sort of a un um what's the word you can have a more expansive culture within the city without uh without changing cities to a certain extent yeah it's it's a weird situation we can create a you know how a lot of districts can sometimes specialize in things mm. um yeah but you can also create situations where a district can specialize uh 
because they have the convenience of the elf gates mm. but it also means that you can create quite disparate uh, geographies between each district because they're literally in vastly different geographies mm. you can have one that's a coastal area that goes straight into a volcanic area in the middle of a desert or something like that and it's it makes the city kind of make sense if you think that each district is its, almost its own township or city in itself but they're all technically connected mm. because of the um what's it called the infrastructure in place mm -hmm. and so you have this sort of like i guess tram is kind of the best way of putting it but you have this connection point between all the cities through the gates and it allows them to do stuff like trade and other such things but as we've said in the previous episode um the portals are not always sort of designed for major trade or sort of allow for that right so with that all being said what uh kind of district would you like to make first off what's i had to have pretty like distinct biases on certain areas so <laughs> amy would you like to have a particular what is your particular district in mind that you would like to try and see us go through in terms of creating a city just to see the process It's like as the city grew, it just absorbed all the little villages and settlements, and those unique origins might be reflected. Yeah, That's like a city cool. does that, right? If you mm -hmm. think about, okay, so this is difficult. Auckland. Yes. Yeah, Auckland in New Zealand is a prime example of that. Mm -hmm. um, the mega city type thing. I think in Japan, um, you can probably think of like Tokyo City actual and like the Tokyo, um, the word prefecture, mm -hmm. or the great. Like, for the term for it there's a certain term for like the greater administration of the tokyo area mm. yeah that's about also makes it easy to build because it's modular yeah and we could also just you could also do weird things like you fiat an extra like um uh, district almost on the fly because you can just like write it in that is connected in some way mm. yeah it also has um Holt and I were thinking that it has very interesting implications in terms of how you define um the more affluent areas from the less affluent areas as well mm. yeah um because the city is specialized and with so much trade going in between theoretically each each district would be affluent but probably it would be a more radial affluence rather than like pockets of it so the affluence would be centered on the gate which is in the center of the city and then the affluence would be less and less the further away from from that gate you were positioned um yeah which is interesting um so as we go through uh, the question's been asked in the Game Mastery Guide is what settlement, uh, sorry, what role does our settlement have in the story? And almost in that part, you kind of have to think about what is the role, yeah, what is the role of this area, township, city um, for the purpose of our story, right? Because I'm going to start here at level one, for instance. I want to think about the fact that this is meant to be a starter town. Mm. Uh, how you can order city because the portal can need to approach us to by water city. Yes. Mm. Oh, just cutting off. Uh, and our post connected by a portal can technically be considered part of the city. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Um, separate to the USA, but it's still, still, yeah, pretty much. Or like Hawaii mm -hmm. to the USA. Um, what was the original question? The original question was, what was the what role? role? So, yeah. Mm. So for starting level one, let's just start let's assume level one because that's probably the thing that the GM's going to have most difficulty in is just a starting area. Yep. Um, 
what is what did notes say about it? it doesn't mention any particular re oh the cursor is the the roller story um so yeah if we think in terms we need it to be a starting area because level <laughs> one um you don't want it to be an end area well we at least need it to be this area you can start in mm. and um that's probably the reason why a lot of gms would say to use like a, a village mm. because at least with a village if something screws up you don't like collapse your setting <laughs> um, yeah. and once you you know grown past the village so to speak you can just move out of the village and just journey forth into the greater area you go from mm. there um dnd5 does it really well with uh lost minds of found Devil, um quite a few of the books in the sword coast region is a similar thing mm. um, well what we could do is um we could base it around like the level one region around an outpost that's connected to yeah. the portal so, sort of system um rather than being one of the city districts because an outpost would have similar things to a village it would need to have some level of like self-sufficiency but we would probably not have a whole bunch of people right no it would not and mm. so the implication is why is this outpost a small district um mm -hmm. because if you have a geographically advantaged area uh, they'll usually have something tied to it that makes it good mm. um for instance if the region happens to have a lot of fertile land around it um you can easily devote it towards agriculture so it has a lot of tradable goods mm. um a mountain might have a good mining area um for another one would i think we thought about possibly is the fact that if there's a area that has a very consistent temperature mm. um even if that temperature is less than perfect as long as there are consistent temperature and there's very little like disruptions to the overall climate all year round that makes a perfect trading area mm. if you think like singapore yeah um in saying however, that should we start with the market district because that's already one facet taken care of yeah so if we were going to go for a district yeah mm -hmm. let's start with the district because it effectively is our version of a township in this case mm -hmm. and just go along the idea that it needs to be a level one area okay yeah it's well, a good one. the thing is as well that it's a level one area right but in saying that you can have level ones be in larger cities, right? Yeah, easily. You need to be. Mm -hmm. So, with that in mind, I feel like we can just develop this sort of, like, grouping of shops and markets and stuff like that around the level ones because you have a lot of that sort of low-tier money changing hands it's like yep. you have fruit vendors and you have you know sort of a variety of shops but like it works in between them uh so would you rather the cinnamon? okay so district um so mm. okay apparently the mapping cinema doesn't involve writing things oh no it doesn't involve drawing things which is pretty good okay so yeah if we go with, like mapping a settlement right um, yeah. And the first part they put down is a city layout. So, mm. um, for what it means, it's, what it means to say, uh, or what I'm skim reading it, you need to detail the t overall terrain and the surround, particularly the surrounding terrain in terms of um, trade and so forth. Mm. So trade is sorted. Yeah, um, with the port. Our trade is defined by the fact that it's a an elven city, mm -hmm. effectively, and um you know take you on a day job loading stock just shopping on see if they chase down yeah so mm -hmm. one way you can easily do it is it's a small township that is on the precipice of a potential boom mm. so for instance like a mining boom or something um it could be an outlying area like the outlying area that would potentially have access to um 
unknown but potentially very valuable goods and being in this outpost is not the greatest because it's not an established area but it has a lot of potential mm. um yeah so if we're going for a small outpost it's a starter area we needed to basically have an area that has potential but the pl <laughs> but what i'm reasoning is um the player's potential needs to be stronger or at least progress fast enough so if players want to move out of the region they can do so mm. um we could uh <laughs> so i put the i put the postulation out that the the s sort of settlements and that sort of thing um the districts could have a sort of judge dreadish uh wall that surrounds them sort of an oppressive Lee tall <laughs> wall that uh, defends the city, but also all of the poorer class or like the slums would be kind of outside of the city, mm -hmm. um, in sort of camps or sh you know shacks or whatever they can kind of cobble together. But like going towards the city would would you would go through that area kind of thing because it's like a bossing say situation kind of yeah like with those massive mass massive stone walls i feel like because there's so much movement while staying within the city that you could almost have people that would have never left the confines of an elven district yep in their entire life a pretty good one actually so that opens up us, us up to potentially moving towards not having to be like a distant outpost, but actually just being on the outskirts of an established area. Mm. Um, the city, the, the urban item me actually likes the idea of just starting in a city. We just happen to be on the outskirts of the non affluent area of the city. Mm. So that city can still have a bit of that danger and it still has that feeling of being a, um, low level area and it mm. gets more difficult as it progresses as you go as you go deeper, deeper, deeper in deeper. right yeah hey miyaka good to see you yeah i like that i like that idea i think um so with that i think we should uh, develop the sort of out outside slums or camps and that sort of thing so i might what i might do is i might start a new spreadsheet and I should probably title this one uh, Ancestry Notes. Because, you know, that's a thing. And then title this one, let's go City Building. Why do I look so white? Um, it's because the power the of the sun, sun is currently shining on my face and I haven't been outside as often as I'd like this summer. Mm -hmm. So if I actually, like, let's say, oh, pull in the curtains so to speak mm -hmm. probably also help with your green screen effect it gets a bit better um okay okay so uh let's go elven districts yeah so mm. at least in the example that paizo gives in terms of the steps the city layout just needs to determine the, the general terrain on which it is and how that terrain can service the size of the industry mm. the slums near the near the market area because stock moment it's smelling noisy oh, okay I was almost thinking that the, because of the way this is, you want the industry closer towards the gate, but the further mm. out um, means you don't have access or really, really access to fresh goods. Or that's where the cheapest goods are. Because it's not the freshest. And it's kind of like the dregs that get tossed to them. And so they sell it and or they like they buy 
they buy the sort of like stuff that is given away at the end of the day yeah from from the sort of more affluent people and so they're getting like day old bread and all that sort of thing right and Different, these definitely. exterior markets have this sort of like they're cheaper for sure which allows poor people to live but it's kind of this it creates a kind of oppression in the interaction between the the city and yeah, outside it, of it. I mean, it's like not only the appearance but potentially even the health of the goods mm. um they're getting worse goods yeah like low quality right or shoddy definitely definitely so yeah. so exterior so elven districts have walls and i realize that nobody can see this uh notes these notes that i'm making so i'm just gonna move it down so um it's just a soft board the market here um another important part is that um being in there a lot of the gates uh is very helpful for the trade because you often have mm. quick access to um the front of the city itself in terms of facing for merchants and also the market because that's where everyone congregates mm. um yeah but we an elven city typically has an unusual situation where people from outside who actually travel um would possibly see these poorer areas first mm. and would have to travel through them but you know the more affluent or more successful traders would obviously use a lot of these elven gates to not only quicken their travel time and bring in fresher produce or faster mm. goods um but it's also from the center of the city because mm. um, a lot of cities would use like a river or a coast or something similar of importance to put it near the center of the city or on the side or so forth and grow out from that point but since the gate is your main structure it's this is your um strategic value mm. uh you build the city around it right yeah totally it makes a lot of sense so with that um and the next part just details that you know when it comes to particular districts you generally have more defense the larger district you generally have more defensive walls or you would have more uh, defensive structures for defending the city if it comes under attack mm. makes sense um you brought up that the walls were erected which will likely mm -hmm. protect the uh, much more important or the heart of the city mm. and everyone and if the city has to flow outward um i guess you just have to be outside the walls of the city you live in mm. i feel like depending on how kind of like rings on a tree when you cut it you know cut yep. it down they could have the sort of rings of walls depending on how long the city has been there oh yeah you'll need to right in order mm -hmm. to protect the city you want walls but as the city keeps growing and it's any particular threat looms you need to build these walls mm. it is an important point to bring up is how quickly can a wall be erected knowing that magic is available as a resource mm. Because effectively you could have a ritual, which is just create wall, right? <laughs> yeah, potentially. Because there is like wall of stone or whatever yeah. as a as a spell, but I feel like creating a wall with like parapets and interiors and stuff like that would need to be something a little bit more than just snapping your fingers to make it happen. Wall stone? Is that a temporary? I'm pretty sure it's a temporary wall. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Three um, actions. Spell. Uh, 
You shape a wall of solid stone, an one inch thick wall of stone up to 120 feet long and 20 feet high. You shape the wall's it's path. It's a permanent wall. Huh. That's pretty cool use, actually. <clears throat> hmm. There's something that does pop up is whether something, if it's magical, um, how much is magic taken into account as a answer to a particular problem? Just magic. That's the yeah, answer well, yeah, for right. everything. So, um, street lighting, depending on how wealthy the city is, can actually become a lot more trivial, given mm -hmm. that, um, it's particularly in Pathfinder D&D, the, the, the ever-burning torch is a thing that exists. Mm. Um, you'll usually have to use, what, like, burning oil, oil lamps? As yeah, oil lamps and stuff. Day. But mm -hmm. the thing is, you don't have to do that if magic sustains itself yeah you can just literally cover it during the day or you don't even have to during the yeah. day you can just leave it going and it just sits in lampposts effectively yep. it's what three gold place three gold for a for a Thing? Ever burning torch? Ever burning it's not too torch. bad, actually. Hold on. How much is an ever burning torch worth in PF2? So, in 120 foot sections outside the city wall, there are pillars with runic markings, and the soldiers are trained on how to activate it or something if a bell rings. Instant wall? Uh, so pillars with runic markings. Uh, see, you oh, see, so like it's a bunch of pillars, and as soon as it's activated, they just erect walls between all the pillars. That's pretty cool, honestly. That's a pretty cool one, actually. Mm. That's a, fifteen. If someone gold. accidentally puts their house in between one of the walls, well, I guess that's bad luck. But you know, it's fifteen gold uh, for the ever burning torch. Ooh, that is pricey. Well, considering that's how much you have to have to start your career as an adventurer. Yeah. It could just be interior, though. Interior is one. Um, you could go off the idea that a um, if you have a particularly ancient um, district, they would have just slowly put up, like, one torch at a time. <laughs> I mean, if you got the time right. I suppose, right? It's the, it's the thing. It's good. It's over time. So that would actually be something to consider, is that lighting... It's uh, we take it for granted, but if you don't, if you have light through the area, it's generally safer. But it also means that the area is much more, is much more well taken care of because it has money. So likely, areas that don't have a lot of lighting can be perceived as less affluent because they cannot. Public works aren't funded enough in that area in order to have, you know, permanent lighting. Mm hmm. This one just sitting in Sioni's backpack unused. It's a very expensive torch, but I just looked up Continual Flame, because that's, you know, where it comes from. And the cost of that spell is six gold pieces worth of ruby dust. That's a lot of ruby dust. But, yes it is. But also, hear me out. Everburning Torch costs 15 gold. Yeah. It is an item that effectively is a stick with it's a stick with like light on the end right yeah so couldn't you just continue all flame to create ever burning torches and you know not sell them for cash but like well fun to get yeah i guess you can mm. i think you can definitely see that happening because it's not even that big of a spell. Like a third level... Um... Caster. So basically... If you think about another way, if a print, If an apprentice pretty much becomes a... Um... Not a seasoned, but like... Would be considered an actual mage... At level 3, or even level 1. That's mm. not too bad, actually. Like, level 5... Is... Pretty decent for a mage, at least. Um, well, level three. Sorry, uh, so wait. I have an idea. If like one of the um, one of the things for a tithe is that the population of the city like donates 
um, like, or it's part of the taxes or something like that, is literally just creation of light. It's like one gold a year or something like that per person, or not even that, like one silver a year per person. And you can it's light. like a light tax or something. Yeah, light tax. I can see that. Because the city would be constantly building and stuff like that, right? Well, even if it isn't costly building, it needs funding. Mm. Like, you got your taxes and so forth. You can just define one as like a light tax for a district. Or mm. a particular community bands together in order to make sure their streets are safe. Uh, they voluntarily put together money for the neighborhood watch or something mm. um, towards a tax for maintaining the lights. Mm. I think gonna... they could happen is like, yeah, some place puts up some, um, puts up a um, some street lights using the spell, mm. and then people come along and just bust down, like break off the um, what do you call it the structure, you run off it. of the lights, and mm. yeah, steal it. That'd actually be kind of a fun. Um... Yeah, it's just the everything's in the rates, man. <laughs> It'd be kind of a fun, like, idea for a, like, low t low level um, heist. Yeah. If you're playing, like, one of the Skullduggerous style campaigns. is like, like go, steal a, go, go steal a street light from this neighborhood. Yeah, right? Like, that sounds pretty awesome as an idea. Those puffs are a bunch of wankers. Go steal <laughs> a light from them. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to cover it up quick. <laughs> you don't do it at night, bro. It's harder to steal that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, light is actually a very interesting aspect in terms of like viewing what is safe. Mm. Um, which also is like presence of um, town, presence of city or town guards or like basically law enforcement. Uh, presence of light so people can't just hide and skulk around areas and so forth. Mm. Um, an interesting one is um, in Tunisia, um, the sale or having of uh, torches is actually illegal. Huh. Like flashlight Whoa. torches. Why? Um, because they have such a high uh, B and E rate. Yeah. That effectively they've they've banned the sale of torches because it's the easiest way for people to uh be in the dark but then search around a place would that also mean you would probably want a torch so you catch them yeah but if the only people who have torches are criminals oh okay yeah yeah because so having like poke Sorry. Yeah, so if, if the night is so dark that someone needs a torch in order to see anything, anyone who has mm -hmm. a torch is pretty much a criminal. Yeah. Uh, having light to make the city safe was a great slope pollution. Yeah, mm. actually, yeah. Like, if if you have an particularly idea. like decent city walls, right, you can actually view, um, you can view the sky from the slums much easier because mm. the white pollution from inside the walls um, pretty much blocks it. That'd actually be kind of a cool thing that's not something you really uh, get in fantasy games is like areas of light pollution. Yep. And not being able to see the stars. Fantasy, right? Mm -hmm. You want, you know, while you're going for like medieval, late medieval fantasy, you don't expect an area to just be have light pollution. <laughs> light pollution is not a thing. Yeah, but it's cool. <laughs> Yeah, it is, yeah, it's a cool touch, but it's not something you have in there because people expect it will drop people out of the immersion if you have a light polluted area, especially if you come from a city in the modern age which is light polluted. Mm. I don't know. Cool I... Point actually, it's a very interesting detail is the fact that having light pollution might be a sign of an affluent city. Mm. And people could see it almost as like a badge of honor like they're covering the night sky with yeah like how affluent they are that could be one point putting it or it's a case of like well you can't really have to you don't really deal with 
crime in our city because crime can't hide within us in our lights. Mm. <sighs> um, how to how else to put it? How to put it poetically? Waxed poetically. Um, shadows don't fall on the city streets. That's one way of putting it. Um, we'll pin that one for now, mm -hmm. and maybe someone could, uh, maybe we could think of something like nicer as it goes along. Money is taken for. Uh, castings of continual flame. It also means that people who are able to like snuff out lights or mm. have the ability to dispel magic would actually be quite useful. Mm. Like casting because darkness can, and stuff. Casting darkness, you can use the mm. lack of light to your well, the sudden drop in light to your advantage. Hmm. Let's move on to the next, uh, next thing. The next thing defines that, um, people need a way to buy and sell stuff they get from their adventures. Um, uh, basically they need markets, markets and shops. Mm -hmm. So, um, basically designating areas for, um, it's called, yeah, designating areas for like a market square. So, mm -hmm. It's usually defined that a market square is in the city centre, uh, with a major road intersecting the settlement's primary trade route. Uh, lighting the perimeter of the temporary tents and stores of bazaar, or permanent retail shops offering blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And these areas would be the beating heart of a city's commerce. We have a weird conundrum here. Um, mm -hmm. So the city centre and the trade route are all the same location. Yeah. So there's not really a trade route that runs through the city, so to speak, because mm. the trade route and the city center and the marketplace pretty much are all the same location. Mm. Uh, then, okay, I've got a weird thought. Yep. What if the uh, the city streets? Are designed in a spiraling pattern rather than uh, like cutting pattern. Why a spiraling pattern? That seems a little bit. That seems like a not great design for people that actually do travel on foot. Because going from the central portal. Yeah. You effectively want to be able to hit all of the shops as you go out and out and out further right around the city um that would be something like an architect for like a mall would do mm -hmm. but when it comes to organic growth or design you don't want it to intentionally make it difficult for people to move like if you think about it in terms of a certain like basic green areas um within like parks or universities it is always certain spots near the corners that have just a well-worn path it isn't paved or anything but it's just a well-worn path mm -hmm. because like a whole bunch of students or people have just treaded that path over as a shortcut mm. it's basically that effect um you don't want to make things more difficult for people otherwise it becomes frustrating in terms of a city well, you could have the main trade way be a spiral and then have sort of cutting uh, spokes go through, uh, spokes of streets go like straight out. Yeah, you need to arrange it probably more like spokes. Mm. Um, although I think it's... In terms of like road design and stuff, tend, things tend to be a bit more curved and so forth, from what I remember. Mm. Uh, simply because it's a lot more organic and things can fit a lot easier. Because mm. um, for anyone who can't or the distance is not that good for them, or it's not convenient for them, um, traders who have to actually use carts and so forth and go outside the city um, need to have... They need to basically have routes that are convenient. Mm. Otherwise, they would almost 
enforce convenience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where I thought it's like, well, a spoke can work as long as it's like well interconnected between. Um, mm. But if you, yeah, if you force them to walk a particular path, people are going to be frustrated. And they would almost just form their own path. Um, but yeah. Weird thought. And probably dumb. If you have the city designed like a wheel and the internals of it shift rotate around slowly so that every hour a different spoke is connected to the main gate um I think we run into the problem that um, the big part of cities is that people choose a lot of trade cities based on not only their location, but it's also their stability. Mm. If things change too often, it becomes problematic. Hmm. Um, another, yeah, that's the reason why a lot of, like, they're, they're saying in these notes here that to um, put the city markets towards the center because it's the most equidistant from all locations or at least all um, exits and entrances. So how many exits are there going to be? Because my thought is if you have like one is the most defensible. Yeah. Because you have one point of entry and one point of exit. That almost is a question for how often is that location to be attacked. Hmm. Because if it's, a, if it's a smaller settlement, right, you don't necessarily going to have the a strong wall or a wall. You can just come in because it's a small area. Um, hmm. The hard part is probably defending the gate from the inside of a um, the inside of a major city, then coming in from the outside of an outpost. Um, hmm. For that means they can probably have like no, um, there are no gates because there's no really no walls, and a heavily defensible structure is probably something that gets attacked a lot. So they mm. probably do need fewer um, gates into the city. I think almost at that point, it's dependent on the size of the district itself. Mm. The larger and more defensible district is, the fewer gates it needs. You probably have almost had the situation, right? Where um, the larger districts, the more like central ones, mm -hmm. um, would have quite a few different gates or entrances in the, um, the area just to make sure that there's plenty of ways past the gate to get to the center. Because if you only have like one entrance, right, that thing is going to be like constantly blocked in terms of traffic. And that makes it just terrible design. Uh, so. Rather than the city rotating like a clock, there are a ring of minor portals connected to the main central portal. Central portal opens to a rich, beautiful plaza for the elite, and the others are connected and smaller and open on the clock system. Hmm. I... That would usually define that the elves are actually able to recreate the, the, um, the gate system. Mm. Which I think part of the mystery is they can't. Mm. They just don't tell anyone they can't. Um, that would be pretty cool though. Although, um, yeah. So going along with that idea is that you have a few key points in the city as part of design to make sure that no matter which part of the district you are in terms of its exterior, you need an easy way to get to the center if you need to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my thought is, it's a weird one, but my thought is what happens if the outer walls have lots of exits or entrances or gates to get mm -hmm. to the center, and as you become larger and larger, you need, more, you need to be more and more defensible, so you have fewer gates, or have the gates be more separated out due to being a larger circumference to enclose the city. Mm. So if anyone tries to attack it, you have, few, you have you only have fewer and fewer gates to actually pick from interesting um it's hard to 
the a structure that actually points it up pretty well in terms of its stupidity, but it's not the greatest thing is. Um, the symbol for the Azorius Senate from Match the Gathering. It's that's actually really beautiful, but that's a beautiful one. Okay, no, copy image. So um it's a web picture, but it'll do. So This is gonna break stream. That's okay. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. So the idea behind it is it is effectively a maze, but mm -hmm. the concept of this particular guild in the Magic Gathering setting of Ravnica is that the Senate likes to use the law as a bludgeoning stick to eventually grind you down to if to you can't fight anymore. Um, mm. So instead, you could kind of use the structure, I guess, in order to create the walls of the city. But probably the most important part is to make sure that instead of it, you know, disjoining and so forth, you it is um, it almost lines up or is very easy to reach each other so you don't have massive blockage when moving from one area to the next mm. isn't it isn't the that goblins? the goblins triangles goblins are triangles yes but yeah ignoring the triangles the structure in the center how it has like large gaps effectively you can you can define those as being gates and um instead of positioning the gates such that it creates this um problematic structure that grinds you down and slows you down you make it so it speeds up movement i have an idea so rather than gates per se you have archways that have that same runic idea where yep. you sla you um, touch the seal, and it closes the it like builds a stone it like casts a stone wall spell. Yeah, I think that idea is actually much cooler. Like instead of having walls, like Amy, um, instead of having walls, like Amy was mentioning, you just have mm -hmm. just a bunch of pillars that encircle the city at certain distances. Mm -hmm. Um, when it's, they need to enclose the city in case of defensibility. And mm -hmm. when they need to, the city guard or like whoever just like um, but does a ritual and just activates all the defenses and just closes up the city. So you could have like towers posted throughout the city, right? Yeah, even like pillars or like totems or whatever. Mm. And so you don't have any of the problems of walls where you have like these massive shadow Locked zones. So yeah you or like things to scale and hide on right oh. you effectively have full visibility of the whole city but at a moment's notice the alarm can be raised and then all of the walls can go up that does mean the law enforcement has to be on foot and i think that's actually fine i think that's fine um, yeah it just means that there's better interactability with law enforcement because let's say if you have this massive walls that encircle the city and like and layers and mm. you just have these like arches on top right they just stare down at you and if they see you they just snipe you or something mm. i mean the gm has a lot of power but he doesn't need to be able to headshot you i mean but the thing is you still have i mean it's kind of a compromise right because you still have elves or you still have guards in those towers right to create yeah. to create the walls and they can still be as tall as like the massive walls. It's just they build the wall instead of like having a constant wall. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically you have a place where like barracks stationed like sporadically around the city and all they do is when times of um, war or something or when they're under siege, 
they just erect a bunch of walls and just aim to slow down armies if they try and come through. I'd imagine they'd be guard towers because that'd be the easiest to do both like wall to wall. So you have yeah. these just towers, but then it's like, cool, you hit the sigil and then it becomes like a wall parapet kind of thing where yeah. it's just like, you know. So effectively the barracks or like the guard tower or whatever, like a place that can mm -hmm. station guards. They're just a bunch of like almost wizard tower-esque structures mm -hmm. where the purpose is to basically hold or station guards for like rest or resupply and so forth or change right. of the guard but also and like, when needed to they just turn into this massive wall structure mm -hmm. to defend the city but also like it's a great vantage point for watching over the city yeah definitely um, yeah, while the walls aren't active, the city the, will look the, nicer. The elves are based yeah. on the air, right? So you can easily define it that elves over time have managed to make use of their affinity for like aerial magic in order to lighten um, structures so you can get to like quite dizzying heights. Mm. Mm, I like that. I don't know. Um, the wall when the walls aren't active and the city looking nicer that could be down to perspective I mean if you have enough of these structures if the if the city is on a hill structure and you have enough of these pillars um, mm -hmm. the city will look like a porcupine <laughs> or like a hedgehog but there'll be space like 120 feet apart right effectively which is it's a pretty decent distance. It actually sounds cool actually but if you had them on um if you had them on like rotation so it was like not not flat like they didn't buttress against each other going outward they would just no. like get positioned and then see here's the thing that i find interesting about this does that effectively mean that the main causeways run through run through these towers and that the main causeways get taken up by the walls i would think so yes right because mm. in a defensive in a defensive situation you need to slow down an invading army as much as possible and the way to do that is to use a wall as though a corralling pit right but main street effectively Main streets would have to be cut off mm. because if you think about it another way, the um, the city plan, right? There's nothing, uh, nothing to pull this gap. Beautiful, yes. I can see that. Um, can the towers be invisible or translucent? I think that wouldn't be good to have guards trying to resupply or have lunch while everyone stares at them through a glass wall. Um, <laughs> go into the bathroom or something. Yeah, go into the bathroom, like, bro. <laughs> Just sitting there. Or like you get, you get a, like a couple of cheeky cheeky people having a perv at the town guard mm -hmm. um but yeah if you just because part of the city planning was to make sure that when the walls go up you don't destroy all existing infrastructure right mm. so i'm guessing yeah all of the roads would need to actually be just like almost city planned such that when the walls are erected you don't destroy a bunch of buildings mm -hmm. like yeah. even ignoring insurance whether or not insurance is in this world, I'm saying no, because that's a mess and a half. Um, insurance? Yeah. Um, like, as in... As in, like, like, insurance companies insurance? Yeah, pretty much. Ignoring, like, you know, ro like, thieves rackets and stuff, but yeah. Um, you would almost need to have um, almost planned or defined areas that are to be like major causeways mm, yeah. for the purpose of just being an area that could be set up or used as for the walls if it, ever to be, if it were ever to be erected it'd be cool though if you had the idea of like archways like the base of the towers is an archway that the main causeway yeah. rolls through and so you can just like you can keep going but like the archways go over the main causeway and stuff like that oh okay so instead of just being a large pillar and it connects by a single point to point you almost have like the arch pillar and then it forms like an arch it forms the top of the wall as it goes around yeah 
Yeah. Oh, uh, I can't do it on a picture, but hold on, I've got a I've got a way to do this. So, paint, <laughs> because that's how. Oh, that looks so much cooler in black. Okay. <laughs> We're just gonna. I also wait. love cities because you use guild. Um, you can also put guilds in it. You go ham on guilds. Guilds are great. Um, all right. So effectively, if you have, where's the eyedropper? If you have, uh, give me a big thing. Um, can you see the stream? Yeah, I can see it. All right. So if you have towers dotted around. And these are like the arch towers. Yeah. So each one is 120 feet. Yeah. Give or take however many it actually takes to go 120 feet around. Yeah. Then when you have... When you have a given thing that... Like when you activate it... These towers have like arches under... Like at the base of them to allow for traffic to move through them but when they activate sorry give me two decks uh, here ish like maybe they all connect a stone wall structure that blocks off that section that section of city. Okay. And so you effectively have, like, you can have this. Oh, and I gotta do it again. Yep, that's but fine. like, you have that, and then you have, like, these rings that can just instantly build around the city. So the arches themselves just fill up? Yeah. Or if you want to go really ham on it, they create tunnels. Which allow the guards to move around the in inner base. Yeah, because I was almost thinking like you need to have arches, but they're pointed in a weird way. So um, the arches themselves, when they, well, the gateways, they point, um, they become an inner, the inner tube. Mm. of the wall structure the circular wall structure mm. so it allows the guards to move through it freely if they need to reposition amongst the different areas mm -hmm. but because it's a solid structure on the exterior you have to actually siege it yeah and so you effectively have this happen you still get elevation for arches and just attacks from the towers yeah so um instead of having the the arch to be a gateway for people to move through you just rotate it 90 degrees and you make it form like an inner tube structure mm -hmm. or a skeleton of an inner tube structure so uh when the walls are erected so to speak um it just forms this like massive tunnel that encircles the district um enabling the t um the city's defenders to move through but um forcing a siege for the others who are trying to attack You know what I find funny is the fact that the elves and um, Judas being massive city planners mm -hmm. are like quite defensive in terms of their structures, like almost dwarven in a traditional sense. That's kind of fun, honestly. So yeah, basically any invading army would be like, oh cool, there's an invading army. Instantly, you know. Which means you kind of have to sneak up. But the thing is, even if you snuck up on... Even if you snuck up on it, as soon as the alarm is raised, you can get your entire... Like, you can get your army cut in half by the fact that you like, have a wall. within just, minutes, like, right? Yeah, within minutes. I'm assuming, like, within, like, take, like, you know... Tens of minutes to an hour, potentially, just to set up the entire thing, imagining how massive that structure is and how much magic's involved it probably takes like a while to sit up but 
if you to basically have to fight be an army going in there like oh yeah this wall cut this entire wall and with complete layers and structures and defensible areas mm -hmm. is fully set up within an hour it's like bro what <laughs> yeah did you still get elevation yeah basically not even like not even an hour like within minutes right yeah but imagine like if you just give them the benefit of the doubt and this thing takes like an hour to set up mm. given how big the city is and like how much um is involved with like you know setting up the proper infrastructure and so forth internally for these like these walls even if it takes an hour that's an impressive hour because mm -hmm. this wall will probably take like years to build for a normal city mm -hmm. you're telling me this thing can be set up in an hour just by activating a few runes by the city guard it's pretty impressive which granted the counterpoint is to either try and strike from the center or infiltrate the city so you're already inside it when you start but yeah basically you have to infiltrate like... all of the guard towers but i mean if you think about it that way all of the guard towers like you're effectively talking about like there's more as you go out yeah so it's a more defensible structure going out than it is coming in yeah you would have to basically right because the walls themselves even internally form almost like a labyrinth to fight it mm -hmm. yeah yeah it doesn't want to be the one the best strategy i think would be to go from the outside or like stop the magic from activating for stop the ritual activating for all the walls you'd effectively have to sneak in to all the towers and then stop them all from activating right yeah but even then that's not an easy ask yeah no it's not you just yeah the dumb idea the, the silly idea is to try and force an open army from the outside mm. at least you got some amazing siege mechanics in each um, tower each tower is a captain or lay holder who the siren goes off has a key like an army dog tag they shove it into the room to release a spell it's already in place boom walls mm. yeah i could that would be cool if there's like a key which is a an integral part of the mm. ritual to make it easier to um, conduct the ritual mm. to take a while to replace all the rooms so smart attackers cause a false alarm raises the walls wait for this appears and then then attacks yeah there probably are quite a few strategies that are involved with like trying to um attack the city it, it wouldn't be completely so defensible that you can't get through it but mm. Um, a major one they can probably try and pull off is actually um, aerial attacks oddly enough mm. ironically actually but then they have the strongest aerial magic right yeah that's the thing right the expectation is that well they likely have a lot of um, or probably at least have thought about measures of trying, trying to protect the city from an aerial attack because dragons also exist in this world and that's something to mm. consider <laughs> mm. you need to stop certain wars going up effectively trapping the populace as you rush in yeah well the problem is even if it goes up successfully the populace is trapped inside the walls mm. Mm. that's at least my thought anyways as well the walls are effectively going to trap anyone in there. Kind of reminds me of like nuclear launch guards. Yeah, effectively. I mean, mm -hmm. you got a while to plan for a particular structure to try and make sure that you don't get your precious city that you've helped develop over like a few centuries doesn't just get blown up mm -hmm. because some. Um, or some upstart with a few dick with a couple of decades inside he's he's a hot shot who's gonna destroy your big tower <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh that was markets <laughs> yeah okay that's a tangent in a bit um mm -hmm. so the next part is defining that um adventurers or they call it heroes but adventurers mm. need to um a place to recover and stay out temporarily um between their escapades so mm -hmm. um lodgings where would you go for lodgings 
um, uh, as of the town market, inns are commonly built in central locations where trade roads meet. Um, and yeah, ideal places for gathering gossip and so forth. Or initiating quests. <laughs> um, okay, so as you as you're building this sort of ring city, it would make sense that you would have inns on all of the rings of the city. Yeah, well, it's definitely large enough, right? You can't have one inn or tavern servicing the entire city. That would seem um, like almost a name. <laughs> so my thought is you could have multiple inns and taverns and the like but the quality thereof and the price thereof increases gets... or decreases as you move from different rings yeah everyone has to target market right mm -hmm. yeah it makes sense mm -hmm. and then you've got like friggin shanty uh inns on the outside. Wait, right. give me a minute. So, if you're an adventurer and you're coming from the outside, mm -hmm. would how far would you go into the city to um, make sure you have like decent innings, right? Because if the outskirts is all where the terrible stuff is, will you just keep moving into the city until you find something? I think it depends on what you can afford, right? Yeah, true, true. So, I mean, it's it's like Shadowrun with the quality of life thing, right? You yeah. can live in a penthouse apartment, super safe with all the bells and whistles and da 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 but that's going to cost you a significant portion of money. And true, if you if you got the money such that you're going to be heading towards these nice places, mm -hmm. you might have used a gate, or, you know, you just go to not bring in a cart that says rob me mm -hmm. yeah or you're gonna have enough guards where it's like <laughs> i'm not going anywhere near that no thank yeah. you the effort required to attack this one vehicle is not enough mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah tiered quality mm -hmm. for sure tiered quality um which is cool i like that i like that a lot i think this can this thing here can be the blueprint for all of the elven districts yeah so, so the, the only difference would be like what will they specialize in and so forth yeah so yeah this would be the blueprint and depending on the type of um specialization it is a note i'll like to put forward is that each city on a general level needs to be kind of self-sufficient on mm -hmm. some level yeah so if there are no tourists or something how a, does it survive um, yeah it needs to be able to survive on its own in general or mostly do so so if it's yeah. ever cut off it needs to be able to survive mm. the trick is how does each thing do so i guess you can just have food stores and stuff like that like you've got places that sell food you've got butcheries and the like well the thought is what if you just make sure you your stores don't take into account um don't get your talk into account tourists or non-residents right are you saying like grocery shops won't sell to you unless you're from the town is that what you're putting I can down see that happening right like if you're if you're a gate that's connected to like a desert with no major natural resources for the sake of survival you need to be able to sustain your own people i mean some might help you others out of the sense of you know charity or charity goodwill or being a good person but i could easily see someone going no my people come first lock down the food so does that mean that uh also people um, have effectively like sigils and stuff also hey david it's good to see you um have like sigils and stuff that prove that they reside within the city i 
how, I'm almost thinking leave that ambiguous. Mm-hmm. Or leave that dependent on the type of outpost, right? Or the type, or the type of adventure of, you're wanting yeah. to run? Yeah, the type of adventure or even the type of district you're going into. Like, mm. some will probably be able to be, some areas are probably more affluent so they can afford different security mm. and so forth. Or like identification is proof. Mm. While others are like, okay, well, we kind of just have to go on your word for it and hopefully we survive. Because mm-hmm. magic to create food does ex- exist in this world. And if you're like a decent adventurer, you can probably find a way to get that spell going. Mm. We did mention color coding too, plus then you can tell travelers because they wear so many colors. Color coding. Huh. So you can mm. tell travelers because they wear so many colors. That's actually a pretty decent one, actually. Yeah. Or like adventurers mm. tend to wear a quite mixed array of different materials or have so, quite exotic stuff are people then almost wearing like i wouldn't say uniforms but effectively like be uniform in the fact that like saint patrick's day style it everyone wears green today you know but like, like everyone, we- everyone wears green from the city is that the kind of vibe we're going for, or are we like... Um, I was just thinking that an adventure, a well-traveled adventurer will generally pick up equipment, fashion styles, or like materials from a variety of different lo- um, foreign locations. Mm. So when they appear in a city, their general level of mismatch can probably tip off some guards as being, um, you know, not from here. Mm. robes represent different districts it's funny because um for the absalom setting book which is the big city the new big new york the big apple <laughs> of galarian yeah. um depending on the type of like i think it's either pants robes or like skirts defines like a loose strata of your standing in society like what kind of material you can afford is that the kind of vibe? No, because that like it defines the type of economic socioeconomic status you're in because of the type of clothing you wear. <sighs> That's so like Egypt, holy crap! It's good so it, in uh... Egypt they have um, they have like this. Uh, I mean, it's not like it's not stated, but it's kind of just apparent that majority of the people who are like guys who are m- working middle class will wear like leather jackets as if th- as like it's like the sort of thing that they can afford and then there's this um yeah pants and politics pants and um, politics in Absalom, pants and breeches are associated with the working class so and have connotations fine. of youth physical activity and violence Robes, meanwhile, are considered aristocratic, genteel, scholarly, dignified, and old-fashioned. Skirts, kilts, and long tunics split the difference and are thus neutral. As a result, Absalom's political blocks are sometimes called the robes for optimates, um, skirts for New Absalom, and the pantaloons for the Citizens League. Mm. You wear pants, you're a working class Joe. Yep. That's awesome. Color is king. Um, diadems are forever. Foreign is fashionable. So the thought, yeah. Um, Green for wives, red for handmaids, brown for aunts. Green for wives, red for handmaidens, brown for arts, grey for Martha's. Bruce hmm. Wilbur yeah so that's my thought anyway of um i don't know if you probably want to be that strict on it mm. but it's something to possibly consider in terms of um well i thought that was interesting at least in terms of linking mm. don't know if you want to be that strict on it but it's something to consider in terms of like identifying an adventurer um mm. a keen eye or a key observant could go well this person here obviously has three or four different styles of um, attire in that one outfit and none of them are from around here so therefore that guy's a foreigner 
something that is that or their accent something that'd be kind of interesting as well is uh you know how runes exist for uh like weapons and stuff have yes. different stylizations of runes for different a regions and areas oh, so uh, that pe yeah. so people look at times. yeah people look at your uh weapons and they're like oh well you're from yeah, there that's a rune from the little one kings bro yeah you're from there mm-hmm like especially if you're like a rune craft or a particularly keen eyed mm. merchant you look at a particular root look at someone's rune on their like weapon or something go huh all right you're from around there i feel like that would be a really neat um society check is to look at somebody and go where are they from based off of what they are right or what they're wearing Yeah. Because we kind of... <laughs> harem pants? What? Oh, harem pants below, like, robes. So are they robes or are they pants? Mmm. Um, hmm. As for... I closed the PDF. Good job, me. Um... I think that's probably the only yeah it's only another major point so yeah mm -hmm. pins you we probably just spread them around around throughout the different areas as mm -hmm. you know as needed because of size of geography yeah and expense based off of expense was where basically yeah, yeah. yeah. how viable is your how viable is the size of your market in order to set up it in here mm -hmm. that's probably it like the thing to say is, in this case, almost, there mm -hmm. are inns slash taverns. Probably more taverns than, like, inns. Assuming, yeah, inn is a place you sleep at. A tavern is a place you carouse. So, yeah, there's probably more taverns than inns. Definitely. Yes. Or otherwise, we could call it a pub. All right. I wonder, do they have a... This is religion. Um, there's a different section going over settlements. Something that yeah. I'd kind of like to do while we're, while we're at it yeah. is go through like markets and shops and then inns as well. And like do some example inns and markets and shops that would be in this place. Utilizing okay, so what we've already this... created. Often a lot of inns and so forth are influenced by the area they're in. So mm -hmm. going back to the the districts, uh, yeah, no, not districts. Um, the step one, the city layout. So there are different um, terrain they're in, and I think it comes mm -hmm. down to terrain, right? Or at least what is the specialization of the city district? Mm -hmm. And that will probably define a lot of the area. So well, we're effectively creating like a trade. I know yeah. that all the things have trade, but this is like the trade. So the trade district. area. So it's probably like possibly a bunch of inns or taverns that have a a riff or a play on words around trade. Hmm. Like a tavern, like a pub or a tavern called the Loose Change. <laughs> I like that. Can that be a poor uh, inn? Or oh yeah. That needs to be a poor in. Uh, that's a great name. The question is, um, if there's a shop or an establishment called Elegance, what type of, um, is, what type of business is it? I mean, my initial reaction is clothing shop. All right, chat. Bring it out, come on. What is, what type of business is elegance? Um This is a great one that I remembered for an alchemist shop, which is called Bottled Solutions. That's a cool one, eh? Yeah. It's based in um Sandpoint. Um such a cool name. I'm like, ah damn. <laughs> Um, um, 
a very generic one is like the Crossroads Inn. I'm like, okay. Perfumery. I can see that, yeah. The ultimate unnecessary. Also, yeah, say like a linen store or a clothing store could be one. Um, mm. It could also be an establishment for um, nighttime individuals or ladies of the night. Um, the ultimate unnecessary, unnecessary item in roleplay. Okay, all right, all right. You want a, a perfume? There's um, there's magical perfume in the setting. They bring that up. The Lady Sorshin, who used to be the Rune Lord, or I guess he would if he would be that way, the Rune Lady of Lust. Um, where is Queen Sorshin? Come on, Sorshin. Sorshin starts with S. Okay, Sorshin starts with Q. Where's Sorshin? Have I missed this? Oh yeah, Bella Marius and Sorshin. Okay. So... I came up with a name for a barbershop. The Razor's Edge? Yeah. That's a pretty good one, actually. I was I was thinking that was pretty good. Yeah. The Razor's Edge. So Sorshin... Um, Sorshin? She has a... So... She's trying to go away with the whole idea of being the Rune Lord of Lust. Mm -hmm. um, she's gone away from a magical addiction of sorts. And one of her new um, hobbies is that she likes making perfumes. In fact, magical perfumes. So. Yeah, but... What is in those perfume perfumes? And what effects do those perfumes have? Okay, so the, re the, aromatic, uh, the aromatic lure you override a target's olfactory senses, luring him into a specific location. Uh, oh, this is magic that uses lures. That uses... It's magic that uses perfume. Uh, override the olfactory senses, luring him to a specific location through tantalizing salt, false scents. Select the target square within range that is not hazardous or occupied by a creature. They are drawn to the location, become euphoric upon arrival. Do will save... And there's the four things of success. Yeah. In her free time, the former Rune Lord Sorshin has taken mm. to creating perfumes, both of old formulas and new scents. Although she hasn't gone out of her way to sell her creations, her reputation has seen the fragrances slowly make their way to exclusive collectors at high prices. Oh my gosh. She looks pretty cool. Um... Amy, the you, you just brought up Pixlop could be a really cheap eatery. Like people know it's a bad place, but it's cheap, so you got you got to do what you got to do. I had a thought for it that, that just like ripped off of that, called the trough. Trough is a that's a cool one. Mm -hmm. It's 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 flowing. The juices are flowing, man. It's it's funny how we all thought thought of like low end ones. Yeah. <laughs> The House of Language and Culture for a coffee house. Can you, that, yeah. uh, can you elaborate on, on that? The pig sloth, the pig sloth, or the, the trough. The trough is a pretty, like, you can easily have two of them, right? Pig sloth is good, too. The pig sloth is really good. Okay, I could easily see that in like a very agrarian area. Mm. Um. Also, have in your homebrew world Wizards of the Roast. It's a Starbucks your players will like. <laughs> Wizards of the Roast. Friggin'. That's like how freaking Watsy is right now. It's Wizards of the Rust. Uh, good old cell phones. Um, a high end one. I almost think you just go for teachers at that point. Uh, country club. The country called, club? Called the Inner Circle. Oh, that's beautiful. 
<laughs> oh, I can't believe I hadn't thought of that. That's that's good. Mm. It's like right next to uh... the gilded lily. Learn, folks, like to debate. Mm. House of language and culture. I would almost think um, the the roadside college. That could either be like a parlor or like a tavern. Hmm. Um. Oh, hold on. I, I just thought of it. Um. Okay, hear me out. An art store. Yeah. Right? Called uh -huh. Uh -huh. Community Collage. Instead of Community College. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that was that was all right. It's just like me just creating names for businesses based off of puns. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, what was it? Roadside. The, um, the roadside college. The tavern. Roadside college. Tavern. Um a gentle sleep. Uh, gentle luxury sleep. house cafe. Plus the luxury of stop and have a chill afternoon is also a rich privilege instead of working. But the steep is the so good. Down, feather, the importance. That's actually really good. It's steep as in like what you do to tea. Yeah. That's actually really clever. Mm-hmm. Fairy Downs, Monkey Feather, Importers. Hmm. Oh, what's the name of the, um... The name of the theme in Starfinder is called... Someone who's pretty much lacks, you know, all the senses. Mm. That's here somewhere. High end, high end food place. The Sid, um, Sid Saints Retreat. I like that. And what's that? I have, I guess, a restaurant. Okay. Um, Either that or it'll be a place to sleep. Like a, a hotel or something. How do you spell restaurant? My gosh. Restaurant? Towerant. <sighs> Restaurant. Goblin. I think Goblin oh my would be gosh. like an amazing mid tier one. Goblin. Oh my gosh. Yep. That's that's pretty good. An amazing like tavern slash in the Goblin. Okay, I've got a tagline for the Sensate's retreat. Sad. Or I don't know if it's a tagline or a different restaurant, but um a feast for the senses. Yeah. Vibrant voca vocations, a theater showcase. That's cool. Mm. Actually. Love the alliteration. Goblin is brilliant. Yeah. 
importers could actually be really cool as a place that deals with infernals. Gosh. I have a place that, like, binds devils to people's, like, binds devils to people as servants. Like, um, I could also see, um, someone just binding imps for the sole purpose of, um, using them as cheap labor. It's like, I oh, I need someone to stock imps. all these imported goods. I'm not gonna hire people, they're too expensive. Let me just bind some imps, man. <laughs> Uh, for the senses. Vibrant vocations. A theater would be a really nice one. Mm. Um. What about a smithery? I'll see you stay at all the imps are porters. Oh! Hmm. Me just looking at this. Uh, government for settlements, power structures. Wasn't in this one. Hold on. It was actually in the building worlds. I don't know why. Wow. Oh. Um. Mm. I had to be that person, but wouldn't that be a place where you could go for some light BDSM? Then I mean, you know, like, I, I was thinking it too. Like. <laughs> Uh, the hags had out called the witchery grub the cauldron Food come on together. easy as the cauldron has to be the witch's hangout like be so good or uh, shop um, specializing no um, no, the cauldron of mix, which is a bar. I feel like we're we're we were this close to greatness. Uh, hold on. Shop specializing in bondage. Dot dot dot. I don't know yeah. what that means. Bubble and squeak. Oh, yo, that's beautiful. <laughs> Get your racks together. Oh, that's a that's a cool name for a, a blacksmith shop. Get your racks together. The witchery grub. Wait. Get your axe into gear. Oh, that's actually... Yeah. Axe into gear. Axe into gear? Yeah. Look, standing on your shoulders here, David. It's, it's the way. It's the way things go. Axe into gear. Blacksmith. I do like the get your axe together. I'm going to put that down. Um, so, witchery grub. Oh, jeez. Let's put that there. No, what would be funny is witchery grub, and it's like this ultra high class place where hags come in to, um, put on the, put on the best illusion. Look at my outfit. I'm here to take some poor dude. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Uh, boot, knife, and leather. Boot, knife, and leather almost seems like a front for a thieves guild. Or a not so thinly veiled uh, place where thieves get equipment from. Yeah. Cauldron and mix. I want to go bubble and squeak. Yeah. There's probably a like number gateway of stores. Pubs or something like that, like Gateway X or Yeah. Or like a clock um a clock shop called like the Passage of Time. Mm. <laughs> nice liver is the actual wanted store. Oh yeah. Although, a, a little cafe called Bubble and Squeak that serves Bubble and Squeak and that hides a whole bunch of witches would be kind of on the nose. <laughs> Hold on. Uh... Boil and trouble. Boil and trouble. For a like witch's coffee shop. Oh, I was gonna call it bubble. Yeah, bubble and squeaks are a good one. Which we grab. These are pretty nice names. <laughs> Tham theater. Knife and leather. Um, do we have enough, like, of the basic? Even we could be a tire. I like the name Cleave and Weave. Cleave and Weave. Um,. As we go through this, this mapping a settlement, we've got markets, shops, landmarks. So, what landmarks are in this city? Okay, let's ignore the fact that it's got an elf gate. What mm -hmm. other ones? Okay, so landmarks that easily go well is. Um, local flavor designer hand for a landmark with pieces to visit, general neighbors, and also a richer thing. Random mobile service might be noteworthy, but the Celestial Watch House is here okay. So, um, what would be something interesting for a market focused district? So, um, a gold mine would be, um, would, could be one. Mm -hmm. Um, so, a One that would uh, uppercut punch, they sell punch. That's a pretty cool one. Um, mm. So, an, an interesting landmark or place for um, that we near this region is if we go on the nose, um, it is said that a a small settlement of leprechauns lives nearby. Mm 
Um, mm-hmm. Could be one. Um, that doesn't really work. Another one could be the fact that um, it has to be inside the city, though, right? Uh, okay, this is, this is, this is. I think uh, just outside the city could be could be one as well. So, if it just, just when you go to the city, it's one of those like potentially tourist things. I'm just doing market to the city. It's a little for the last time we did date a few. Yes. Um, one that can easily do quite well here is the fact that it would be near a, sh- a massive shoreline. Um, mm. Like school training, celestial point to see stars, can't remember what else. So yeah. Um, this one could do quite well in terms of um, a lot of non-magical academies could be here. Um, mm. In addition, um, geographically, being near a coast could make it actually quite advantage- advantageous just in general. So the area just happens to have a very stable climate that doesn't change that much. So easy to put it on a tropical coastal area that happens to have a gate within it. And that would mean that it's in terms of its general location itself, it's very good. It just happens to be extremely advantageous because it has a gate attached to it. So mm. um, that could be one. Um, I feel like um an astrarium um or an observatory but something that allows them to see through the light pollution yeah so you effectively have this thing of like they need to develop this building because the uh pollution from having like the lights on constantly um, you can easily make it a structure that's outside, just out, um, just past the outskirts of the city. Mm. So it would be very, it'd be very good for looking at the stars, and it'll be outside the area where the pollution is worst. Mm. So you can almost have it like some just very distant. Uh, oh, wait, case. Okay. How about this? So mm-hmm. you know how we've got the different pillars of the arches that are just like mm-hmm. really f- encircle the city. What if there's just like a, a lone? Um, arch or something that is a future plan but it hasn't been fully developed yet such that we've just got this lone arch or this massive tower or something like that that's just quite far outside the city that's just by itself it isn't connected to anything and people have repurposed it for um, an Australian due to its height because I'm a DC fan should we call it the watchtower um, I was something, something. I was trying to think of something else, like clever, but I can't think of anything else. I think the watchtower might be a little too simple. I can mm. see the easily see them na- like naming it or naming it after someone or calling it something fancy to make sure it has this air of prestige. Mm. It's like divination or future seeing, like. Um, one thing that could be, could be. The Stellar Eye. Mm. Stellar. for the, the, the Stellar Tower. Hmm. Hmm. This is a star. What oh. about... What about the Stellar uh, Harbinger? Harbinger? I was almost thinking Omen. For an object? Like, um, the object would be... Um, Okay, it's gonna sound a little bit um, 
almost like edgy, but um, Omen Seeker. I mean, if we incorporate star signs into uh, the idea. Yeah. The whole idea is like, it's um, people using stars to try and predict things. Or you try and like get the word omen seeker or something similar. Try and like melt it together and try and roll off the tongue as fast as possible to see what type of weird word comes out. Okay, um, we want to do that. Let's pull up Latin. What's the word for a tower spire? Um, is mm. there a particular word for? I'm a seeker. What are you? Keep. Keep is usually bigger than a tower, isn't it? Well, these things are made to basically be um, function as full things. Or it could be an exaggeration, you know. Mm, it's a type of fortified tower built within castles during the Middle Ages. So, I do like Oval Grey. Agrarian keep? Ogre is a good word. I'll just try to look, try to top it down. Uh. How about instead of that, we do... Spelt like that. If that will work. I can't see it. It's your... Dub. Ogurium Inspire? Yep! Sounds good. Ogurium Inspire. Tall building that does auguries. Solid. <laughs> mm -hmm. It does... Ex it it kind of does what it says in the packet. Very true. Um... I do love whole gray. It's such a great word. Um... Alright. Yeah. So that's landscape stuff. Landmarks. Well, yeah. That's couple. the only thing I'll probably say is, like, make it actually a quite viable commercial point as a city. But now it actually has an elven gate, which makes it like pretty much supercharges it. Mm. Nothing wrong with that. Hmm. I think we're pretty much done everything. Yeah. Something that's... Yeah, it can be hard sometimes to remember all the all unique names. So, what I sometimes do is try and create trigger terms mm. for it. In this case, you effectively use the fact that, one, it's, a, it's an Elven commercial center, mm -hmm. and it happens, its landmark is an augury tower. Or augury we spot. have to come up with a name for the city, the district. Because um, we can't just call it the market district, that's lame. <laughs> it coins is a little on the nose. Um, that's a little bit, you know, copywritten. Okay, so what is a... What is an interesting aspect of... Alright, so 
the elves have pretty much did the city planning for this town, right? Mm -hmm. So Wald and the dwarves are the ones who have pretty much have the trade, the more global trade language. Mm -hmm. So the question is then, uh, what would be a unifying concept to them that defines this as a marketplace? So I think, yeah, the, it could be that the dwarves see this as like a stopping point in order to offload, to pretty much like pump and dump, right? They just grab a bunch of like goods, drop it here, and mm. hopefully it's good enough to sell before mm. they go, they empty their, all their goods off, grab the money, grab their supplies, and head off elsewhere to grab better goods. Mm. And mm. the elves see this as a convenient location for trade. Or basically a place that um that pretty much is a magnet for money side note i'd like to say that uh this district is the central point for all the ley lines uh for all the oh, yeah, portals a lot of them would be set, uh, like a, an epicenter for a lot of ley lines right mm-hmm All uh, portals, paths. Yes. Because it makes sense because you'd want to have the trade area or the area with the most trade. As we said before, be equidistant to all the other yeah. parts of the city. Effectively, yeah. So. The Nomarian. Nomanon. Nomanon. Humanity, humanity is absolutely. ever seeking the reality the phenomenon, which we intuitively postulate as behind the phenomena of nature. Numenon? Numenon. Is that something from a particular series? I don't understand. Thing as it is independent of any conceptualization or perception by the human mind postulated by practical reason but existing in a condition which is principle unknowable and inexperienceable okay so um one way i could i've thought about it is to just give it because a lot of um Townships or settlements usually have started off with quite simple names. Usually, you don't give them quite grandiose names unless the place is so good that you hope it's good and give it like a grandiose name. So, would you almost just establish a basic or a almost placeholder name for this and it just evolves over time in order to suit the people that use it? Hmm. I feel like that's a cop out. <laughs> and that we're it not worked. coming coming up with a name. Bizarre Plaza with extra emphasis on the za. Plaza. Okay. What's um Nordic term for marketplace? Let's see what's who waved. Yeah, what was our inspiration for the elves? All right, so I think what um, go back to your notes. Um, did you ever note down any particular accents as inspiration? I think you had no. Middle Eastern, which fits the bazaar. Um, I but had I Middle think Eastern we had for dwarves. In particular for elves. We didn't have anything in particular. No. Yeah, dwarves. I think we had two ideas for like the type of insp inspiration in terms of their speech pattern and so forth hmm. I think yeah we, because it looks cool um, using the lettering similar to being um, Arabic hmm be cool um what are they term? huh central city <laughs> Central City. Oh. Uh, oh gosh. 
Okay. Well, okay, so, so the what is thing the is... Arabic what's the Arabic term for fucking marketplace? That's not bizarre. I believe it is bizarre, to be honest. Ultimate, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the other one? What is bizarre? The thing is, bizarre works really well because it's Persian. Yeah. Alright. Baza. Oh! The argument we coming from, yeah. And you just give, give it something else at the end. Mm. Like, it'll pretty much be like Baza, right? Mm. Um. Translate from English to Persian. Market. Not oh, Baza. Ah, uh, Baza. Persian doesn't have a. Okay. Arabic, then, I guess. Falcon. So cool. Um. Marcadon. Uh, four elves. What would probably be an inspiration in terms of elves as like language would go for them? See, that's what I was wondering. Do we do... Okay. Riffy language, go. I think I said Nepalese was for, um, the gnomish people. Oh my gosh, let's go German. German? German elves. Center. Most in German. Boost Baza? Um, is it? What are the two dots on top? Oh, come on, copy paste, buddy. Copy paste. Hold on. Uh. I put an umlaut there for no reason. <laughs> What's lightened? Lightened is uh, in. It's an adjective, and it's uh, conductive, leading, managing, executive, managerial, senior. Would that imply central? Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's go with that one. Because obviously they're just going to put it as two separate words, but uh, granted, linking the two words will probably make sense for something like that, but I can see them doing like separately. Mm -hmm. If or we're basing. Either. You know, whatever works. If we're basing the elves off of German, then they have a lot of compound words where they basically just like put word to word to word to word what that word is. Yeah. Um. So in that case, what if you almost go remove the D and just link the both words together? Mm -hmm. Item parser. Yeah. So, like simple example, but like the natural sciences or physical science is called Naturwissenschaften, like we might yeah. call it physics, but Wissenschaft is science so they yeah. just like slam the words together yeah i think in this case slam the words together and just drop the d so it kind of like flows yeah the thing i was going for is a coastal market so frankfurt <laughs> yeah kind of yeah okay if we're 
dropping the like D, should we drop the B? It's like you go for Baza. It's almost like trying to burn. You put more influences on the Tsar. How about this then? Light to Nasa. The Tenazar. The Tenazar? That actually looks well, yeah, like tennis are. Alright, done. <laughs> we got there. In the end. It's much like pick, um, creating a character in any RPG. You just take ages going, um, you know, agonizing over the smaller details. Like, mm -hmm. their eye shapes. Eye shapes. Or name. Uh, the eye shapes, yeah. much more crude things and so fucks 2077. Yeah. Like sizes of things. Things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, the way I would have, yay, woo. The way woo. I would have thought that does really good for what they've gone forth is like a baza, bazaar. Mm. And that pretty much going off like what the dwarves are called, right? They'll come in as, oh, it's a bazaar, it's a market. Mm -hmm. We go here, we, we drop our goods, grab some money, and leave. We could call it, I mean, like, we could call the Light and Bazaar. Right. Nah, I think just look it together. It makes it seem like, more exotic. <laughs> like Tenazar. Like Tenazar. Uh, we, me, Haka, we have named the, we have named the district. Yep, Light and Bazaar. Light and Bazaar. Oh. There we go. Central Market. It's done. Well, Central Bazaar. Yeah, pretty much. Also, I need to put in the ancestry notes that we're basing the elves off of Germans. German elves. Because oh. <laughs> like, they're often a lot, um, either like English, right? Yeah. Lord of Walk. Well, at least in the Lord of the Rings, they were like English. Because it's the Night Elves in Warcraft, right? Night Elves, Blood Elves, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um. What? Accent. Okay. Let's see if we can Google this and maybe someone can answer it for me. What? Oh, the elves of Dota have Australian accents, okay. Can't just come from a land down under. <laughs> Trolls are Jamaican, dwarves are Scottish, humans are Highborn English. English accent is uh, what the elves were depicted as in uh, Tolkien. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I like elves are aristocratic English, or 50 mm -hmm. to 60 middle class, middle to upper class English. Yeah. Um, the blood or high elf is posh American. Uh, Manhattan, Lower East Side. Uh, One of three both. Native no. American or accented African. The Orcs, uh, unaccented African American English, and gnomes, like Canadian. I guess the question is, when are we running a game in this world that we've now created? <laughs> <laughs> I think you could almost start with this and just like negotiate as you go in terms of like cool ideas. Mm -hmm. I think the big thing is people actually contributing to the lore as you go instead of going, okay, cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, create the setting by committee. That's how things yep. should be done, right? I do like what we did with this uh, like wall. That's a cool one. Thing. That's... That probably requires a bit of this like explanation, but you know. It is a cool idea, not least. I think it's... One thing that, um... I think it's the... A few settings do this. Um, I think Game of Thrones has it. Mm -hmm. I've a feeling... Oh, let me just check on Eberron. Eberron deities. I don't think they have... They have titles as well. Yeah, the, the titles are the Sovereign Host. They're... Of... What's the name of it? Oh, they do have they do have names. Okay, my bad. Um, the names for the um the ones in Exandria often have titles instead. 
I am actually quite a fan of that idea. Um, you talking so about gods? Deity, you just give them a title or something. Before I go on that tangent, that orcs. could be a long tangent. Orcs have Kiwi accents. Orcs have Kiwi accents. Give someone a Kiwi accent, like fairies or orcs. Go, Siggy, bro. I think a fairy rocking up to you and going, go, hey, bro, Siggy, bro, would be pretty funny, actually. Oh, well, mate, have you got someone else come here? <laughs> Yeah, just, just over here, please, you know. Blah, muscle fag. <laughs> uh. Uh huh. Yep. I don't know. Some part of me would find it funny to have for an orc to have Japanese accents. Oh, Corey. I like just like massive, like hulking being that is like the orc, and he pulls out like a katana. You could have some big, big, like two-handed weapon. You choose a katana. Speaks in orcish. Arigato. <laughs> oh my god. I can just see it. I can see it. Some part of me that would be pretty interesting to watch is um, what if you based an entire, like, let's base the entire elven mindset as villains on, like, Giancarlo Esposito? Giancarlo Esposito, you know, the actor. Yep. Yes. The entire <laughs> evil elven stereotype is him. <laughs> As in the actor. Yes. No, as in, like, the ki the characters he's often, like, typecast as. If Info on a Race like... came with a suggested accent, it would immediately turn me off playing it. Just a thought. I mean... Yeah. That's fair. I feel like, just on a... On a level, would talk more about like cultural mindset of things rather than, you yeah, know, not actually accent. But not actually mindset. accent, because can you imagine elves walking around going, "Hello, it's good to see you. Welcome to Light Elizar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you if you break the law, we will find you, and we will hunt you down. Uh, we have these walls. There's not walls yet, but there will be walls." Uh, when we activate them, there will be walls uh, that will come up all over the city. And if you get in the way, you will be crushed. And if you get in the way, uh, that will be a bad time for you, because you will either be crushed by the onslaught of magic that comes uh, for you, or you will be flung up uh, hundreds of feet, and then you'll have to find some way to get down. And that's problematic. <laughs> anyway, enjoy. An interesting thing I was thinking about is how would you, based on like the the traditional culture of each of the different ancestries, mm -hmm. how could um what would evil seem like coming from them? Imagine the elves getting drunk and setting off the walls for jokes. Oh I mean... god! Oh, that would be so expensive. <laughs> That'd be one really expensive bender. But that's probably the reason why they have like a ritual tied. I would imagine a ritual tied to them instead of like a simple key tag to the wall. Yeah, you can't just go boop and then like. <sighs> imagine. Like, oh, sorry. Okay, so we've got a few people in here. Mm -hmm. One interesting thing is, let's see if we can try and fish for some ideas on like the orc people. So. Um, last time we kind of covered going over, uh, different ancestries and how they can be misinterpreted by slight tweaks to their culture and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. it, 
you know it has to have oh yeah of course no it has happened yeah it definitely happened like mm -hmm. not even by a member of the the city guard it probably happened on a dare because some wizard wanted to prove himself mm -hmm. i bet i could like you know figure out and break down the ritual so i can do it and then set off the alarms just so i can prove how smart i am that'd be pretty horrendous i would imagine oh yeah and that could be a start to a great adventure. <laughs> Very true. Um, okay. so, so it works. Is that what you're yep. talking about? So what we'll finish the stream on? Uh, we can finish the stream here? We can fin easily finish the stream here. I mean... Hmm. It's a pretty good place to finish, right? We've been going for two and a half hours. Yep. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, I feel like we brought up a decent point and that we need to create some deities. So, creating a pantheon, oh, okay. uh, I swear can be... I have found a entry that there's like a common <laughs> list of domains. Archetypes in... for the different gods and stuff. Yeah. Common domains. Uh, mythological... But next time we can uh, do a stream specifically around <laughs> gods and creating a pantheon. Because I feel like that would be a fun stream to do as well. Yeah. And then like different celestial stuff. Because we can do pantheons and then we can do like devils and like Ice. other celestial Extra planar entities and stuff like that. I think I might have found it. Well, we can show it. Okay, it's a quick Wikipedia entry, so take off a grain of salt, but it's the best I've got so far, so let's run with it. So, uh, it's a Do list of deities by classification. And, oh, Should um, we link apparently, it? some dude. Uh, or lady, whatever, has made a classic, a basic classification for types of gods based on the life motif index of folk literature. And by that, you could almost just take broad strokes and run with it. Plus, right at the bottom, it's got by association. It's got a list of like different, but effectively domains you can pick off for mm -hmm. a given deity. Oh, yeah. So you got, like, agriculture, beauty, um, knowledge, sun, smithing, mm -hmm. tree, uh, nations, wind, stuff like that. Well, next time, let's uh, create a pantheon. Now that we have that uh, list. And, uh, yeah. Finish up stream there. Sweet. Good. Cool as. Well, in that case, uh, we'll catch you all later. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you, David and Mihaka and Amy, for all hanging out and throwing ideas in there. I hope you had a good time. And, uh, yeah. It was fun to throw out, like, shop names and, and, and stuff like that. This is pretty cool. But uh, come back next time uh, for Behind the Screens by doing a Pantheon. And before then, I will uh, be doing a uh, stream of my character for the Outer Worlds where I'm playing uh, basically the dumbest character possible. And it's really funny because he unlocks unique dialogue options that... Uh, Far different to what you would normally get so anyway i hope you all enjoy and uh we'll catch you next time wherever we see you thank you bell announcer for hanging out and doing the stream and stuff no and problem. uh yeah i hope to see you next time awesome catch you all later